Are you sick and tired of ChatGPT censorship? Do you wish you could do some uncensored roleplay on your computer without some big corporations spying on your conversations? Well boy, do I got a solution for you. Hello humans, my name is KU Overload, and recently OpenAI unveiled a bunch of new tools and updates to ChatGPT, which is pretty cool. However, there is one thing that will never change, and that is the fact that ChatGPT is still a censored AI model that is controlled by a big corporation. You don't have any control and you cannot do whatever you want with it. So, how would you like to run any uncensored large language models with multi-model capabilities where you can use your own microphone? to talk and receive audio answers, all of that running on your local computer. Oh jeez. Well, this is exactly what I'm gonna show you how to install today. Because to be able to run those uncensored large language models, we use a really cool piece of software called Ubabuga Text Generation Web UI, which is basically just an interface that will allow us to run any AI text models we want. And to install it, it's very simple. But if you want an even simpler method, I offer a simple one-click installer for my Patreon supporters, which will automatically download and install everything you need. Just download the file on your computer, double-click it, and then choose Started Windows Installation. And then it will automatically download and install everything you need. Simple as that. And the second way is of course the manual installation, and I'm gonna show you how. And the third thing that we need to install is Git for Windows, which is the tool that will allow you to clone the repository. Just click the link in the description, you're gonna arrive on this page, then click on download for Windows, then click on the 64-bit Git for Windows setup, then once you have the exit file, you're gonna double click on it, click on yes, and then click install to proceed with the installation. So then once this is done, you're gonna uncheck this box, then click finish, then you're gonna click the second link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, you're gonna click on code, and then you're gonna click on this little icon to copy this entire line. Then you're gonna create a brand new folder on your computer, in my case I called it Ubabuga, but you can name it anything you want, but try to avoid any spaces in the name because it might cause some issues. Then you're gonna click on the folder path, type cmd, press enter, which will bring the command prompt window, and then here you're gonna type git clone, and then you're gonna press ctrl v to paste the line that we copied previously, and then you're gonna press enter, which will then clone the repository onto your computer. And by doing this it will create a brand new folder called text generation web UI. And now if you go inside, you will see a bunch of different files. But don't worry, we only need to use a few of them. Now if you are on Windows, the only two files that you need to know is start underscore windows bat and update underscore windows bat. The first file is to run the installation and launch the web UI, and the second file is basically to update the software. This is really all you really need to know. So then the next thing that you need to do is just double click on the start windows.bat file, which will then download and install all the files that it needs to run. And then after a few seconds, it will ask you what is your GPU. Do you have an Nvidia GPU, an AMD, are you on an Apple M series, or the Intel Arc, or if you don't have a GPU at all. Because yes, even if you don't have a GPU, you can pretty much run any models you want using only your CPU, which is really super practical. But in my case, say I have an Nvidia GPU, I will press A, and then press enter. It will then ask would you like to use CUDA 11.8 instead of 12.1, but this is only necessary if you have a very old GPU, like Kepler. And in my case, instead of a 3090, it is a pretty new card, so for me and probably for the rest of you, you're gonna input N and then press enter. And then it will continue with the installation. And after a few minutes, the installation will be finished. And it will give you a local URL that if you press Ctrl and then left click on it, will open the web UI. And there you go. We have now finished the installation. And we can start having some fun, right? Well, not exactly. Because all we did is just install an interface. An interface that is used to run AI text models. So the next thing that we need is an AI text model. But how do we do that? How do we download an AI model? And where do we find them? Well, first you're gonna click on the model tab, which will then look something like this. And I know that if you are a complete beginner, this sounds really, really scary. But don't worry, I will explain everything you need to know. This is actually really simple to use. Now in this section right here, this is what we're gonna use to download a model. And to find an AI model, you're gonna use a website called hugginface.co, which is basically an amazing website where you can find plenty of AI models, datasets, and test a bunch of AI softwares for free. And the way we're gonna download our models is simply to download them from a user called The Bloke, which is an absolutely amazing guy that has a huge list of models available for you to download. And as you can see, there is really a lot of models to choose 
from. So in that case, the next question that you might have is, well, first, which one do I choose? And then which format do I use? Because yes, as you can see right here, for some reason, each model has three different versions. Like for example, you have here a model called Vigonia 2, 70B Chat, GGUF, then you have AWQ, and then you have GPTQ. What do these models mean? And which one should you choose? Well, basically all of those are different formats for the AI models. The GGUF is a special format that is only used if you want to run an AI model using your CPU. So if you don't have a GPU at all, and you want to use your CPU to run an AI model, you need to download GGUF models. However, if like me, you have a GPU, you have the choice between AWQ and GPTQ. Now, these are basically very, very similar in the sense that you are both using your GPU to run those models, but one format is more recent than the other. Basically, GPTQ is an older format model that has been recently replaced by a format called AWQ. So basically, if you have a GPU, AWQ is the model format that you want. So basically, TLDR, if you don't have a GPU, you want to download GGUF models, but if you have a GPU, you need to download AWQ models. So now that we know that, which one of those 2362 models do we download? Especially because every model has a different size. Like for example, this is a 70 billion parameters model, and this is a simple 7 billion parameter model. What is the difference? Well, first the higher the parameters, the smarter the model is, but also the more resources it's gonna use. Which is why I'm gonna tell you right now, most of you, even with a good GPU, will not be able to run anything above a 13 billion parameter model. If like me, you have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, if you have like a 3090 or a 4090, the maximum size model that you can run on your GPU is a 33 billion parameter model. That is the absolute maximum. Everything else is only for professional grade GPUs. And if I can give you some advice on which model you can try, the first small model that I recommend is called Mistral 7B, which is basically a small 7 billion parameter model that is apparently very, very powerful for its size and that only requires around 4 gigabytes of VRAM to run, or if you're using the CPU version, around 7 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty good. And if you want a more powerful model, like a 13 billion parameter one, you can try this Lama 2 13 billion time factor model, which is again really really powerful for its size, and that uses around 7 gigabytes of VRAM, or if you're using the CPU version, around 10 gigabytes of RAM. So then, once we know which model we want to download, how exactly do we do that? Well, it's actually really really super easy. All you need to do is once you find the model that you want to download, you're gonna click on this little icon right here to copy this entire name, then you're gonna go inside your web UI, inside the model tab, and then here are the download model or LoRa, in the first field, you're gonna paste the name that we just copied, and then simply click on the button download, which will then start downloading the model onto your computer. Simple as that. And there you go, after a few minutes, the model is downloaded. And for the model to appear in the list, just click on this little refresh button right here, to refresh the list and have our model appear. However, before we select it, you might have noticed that if you use the CPU version of the model, you will not have one, but actually a bunch of different models to choose from, because the block is actually really nice and provide a bunch of different versions of the model that you can choose to suit your need. And for each model, it basically provides the size of the model, the maximum VRAM required to run it, as well as the recommended use case. So what do you do when you have multiple models to choose from? How do you download a specific model? Well, first you're gonna scroll up, once again you're gonna click on this little icon to copy this entire name, then once again you're gonna paste it right here, and then you're gonna click on get file list, which will basically give you all the list of all the models available on that page. And let's say that for this example, the one that we want is the Q4KM, which basically is 4.37 gigabytes in size and requires 6.87 gigabytes of RAM, which is described as medium and balanced quality, and also recommended. Recommended. If we now look at this list, we can see that the q4km.ggguf is right here. So I'm gonna copy this entire line and then I'm gonna paste that file name right here. And then finally, I'm gonna click on download, which once again will download the model onto our computer. And there you go. And then once again, if you want the model to appear in the list, just click on this little refresh button right here. And now we can select our model. However, now that we have our models, what option do we choose right here? Because yes, to be able to load the model, to load the model into the web UI, you actually have multiple options. Now see, in our situation, the only two loaders that we really need to pay attention to 
is auto AWQ and Lama.cpp. Now basically the auto AWQ is for lossy models that are in the AWQ format, while the Lama.cpp is for lossy models that can run on your CPU, such as GJML or GGUF. And in reality, you don't even need to choose them because once you select the model that you want to run, the loader will be chosen automatically. Like for example, if I choose the AWQ, the auto AWQ loader will be selected. And if I choose the GGUF model, Lama.cpp will be chosen automatically. So now, if I want to choose my AWQ model, I'm gonna select it and then click on load. And after a few seconds, the model has been loaded successfully. And now, we can really have some fun. And as you can see, in only a few seconds, I get a response from the model. So now that this is done, what exactly can you do with it? Well, oh boy, you can do a lot of cool things. So for example, let's say that I want to chat with a completely different character. Because yes, this is not ChatGPT. You can actually talk with any virtual characters that you want. Characters that have their own personality, their own way of talking, and you can do all of that for free. So like for example, if you scroll down and you click on character gallery, here in my case, I have a bunch of characters to choose from. The normal AI assistant that is very, very plain, very boring. Then you have this example character that if you click on it, you can start directly a conversation called Chiharu Yamada. Now I'm not sure if Chi is from an anime or if this is just an original character, but basically if you start chatting with her, like say something like, hey Chiharu, what are your hobbies? In fact, you generate, she will basically answer, well aside from my obsession with computers, I enjoy reading, particularly sci-fi and fantasy novels, it helps me keep up with new technology, etc, etc, I'm not gonna read everything, but basically each character has their own personality, and you can create your own characters yourself. Like for example, I created this Sandra, the loving girlfriend, that basically, um, well, uh, plays the role of your actual girlfriend in an actual real scenario, like for example right now you are inside a coffee on a date and you can start a normal conversation with her about your day or start anything else. And yes, I really mean anything else. And you know, you can start some real normal conversation and obviously you can really do everything you want. So yeah, I really leave that to your imagination. Oh, and also do not forget to use asterisks between the words to describe the action. So like for example, if I want to, you know, unzip uh, something and run around screaming, and now if I click on generate, you will see that the text describing the action will be written in gray, where whereas the text that you say out loud will be written in white. And also the same for the character. Okay, so now that we have this, what else can we do? And how can we make this a little bit more fun? Well, how about instead of typing text, you use your own microphone and then have the character respond to you in an actual voice? Yeah, that's right. And you can do that very, very easily. So for this, you're gonna just click on the session tab and then here we're basically gonna enable a bunch of different extensions. So here, for example, you're gonna click on 11 Labs, you're gonna click on Silero, and then on Whisper. And then you're gonna click on Apply Flags slash Extensions, and we start. So now, if you scroll down, you will see a bunch of new stuff appear. You're gonna have here the 11 Labs text-to-speech, which is basically a way to use the text-to-speech from the website called 11 Labs, which is kinda like the best website for text-to-speech audio, where you can use the API to connect to the web UI. So like for example, if I click on my account, then click on profile, you will see here an API key. And if I click on this little button right here, it will make the API key visible. So now if I select it, then Control c to copy it, and then paste the API key right here. Then I'm gonna choose the text-to-speech voice, so let's say I want Charlotte, then I'm gonna click play text-to-speech automatically, and now, if I choose my character, and I make a new conversation, we get this. Hey love, I hope you haven't been waiting long. The traffic was insane. And yes, you heard it right. Now we have our character actually responded to us using actual audio. But here's the best part. I can actually use my microphone to answer that character without having to type anything. Meaning that we can basically have a real conversation as if we were actual humans talking to each other. I mean, why need an actual girlfriend when you can talk to an AI? Come on now. Because if I scroll down, you will see here a new box called Whisper STT. 
which is what we're gonna use to convert our voice into actual text. So now if I click on record from microphone and I say something like, hey honey, how was your day? And now if we wait a little bit, it was all right, nothing too exciting. How about you? Basically what I said in my microphone was converted into actual text where I then get an answer from the character. I mean, this is amazing. This is really, really cool. And this is by far my favorite things that you can do inside the web UI. Just talk to an actual character using your microphone and receive an audio answer. I mean, this is just fantastic. However, the problem with this technique is that as of right now, we're using an API from a paid website. And although you have a free monthly quota of 10,000 words, you're gonna see that you're gonna exhaust that quota very, very quickly. So, is there a way to have a free option? Well, the answer is of course yes. And that free option is actually right here. It's called Silero. So now if I click on this, it will basically show a very similar box with a bunch of very similar options. Where here you can basically choose the language and the text-to-speech voice between a bunch of different versions of male and female voices, which which are actually pretty decent. I mean, not as good as the Eleven Labs, but still pretty decent. So if I choose something like, I don't know, uh, like 68, for example, and I write some text, something like, hey honey, how was your day? With maybe a faster voice speed and click on preview, we get something like this. Hey honey, how was your day? So yeah, maybe not the best voice. Maybe I'll probably choose something else. Maybe something like this one. And if I click on preview. Hey honey, how was your day? So yeah, a little bit better. So I'm probably gonna keep this one just for the test. When you really have a bunch of voices to choose from so you can do your own experiment yourself. So now if I want to use it, I'm gonna click on activate text-to-speech, play text-to-speech automatically, and then show message text under audio player. Then I'm gonna scroll up, deactivate the 11 labs one, and now if we start our new conversation again, we get something like this. Hey love, I hope you haven't been waiting long, the traffic was insane. So yeah, there you go, pretty much the exact same thing. But this time it is completely free, meaning that you can chat for hours without having to worry about the money that you spend. I mean, this is definitely cheaper than a real date. Oh, and also, by the way, if you want to have access to my Sandra the Loving Girlfriend character, which I gotta say is by far the best character that I ever created, I will actually make it available for my Patreon supporters. And to use it and actually upload the new character inside the web UI, you're basically gonna have two files, a JSON file and a PNG file, because to upload the character, you're gonna click on the Parameters tab, then click Upload Character, where here you will have an option to drop a JSON file as well as a pro file picture. So now if I select the JSON file and I drop it right here and then I take the PNG file and drop it right here and click on submit and then if you scroll down and then click refresh you can select this new character right here that you can use and talk to for hours. And believe me I personally had a lot of fun with that character. Yes a lot of um fun. So yeah, once again, if you want to have the character that is only exclusive to my Patreon supporters, the link for it will be in the description down below. However, this is not the end. This is only part of all the cool things that you can do inside the web UI. And one of the cool things that you can do inside is to use the web UI to analyze an image and have a conversation about that image. Exactly like ChatGPT Vision. Now obviously it's not as powerful as ChatGPT, but it's still pretty cool. Now first to be able to use this, we actually need to download a very special model. We need to download a model that is able to see the image and analyze it. And you can actually choose a bunch of models to use it with, but the most popular are called Lava. And you can either choose the 7 billion parameter model or the 13 billion parameter model. So in my case, I will be choosing the 13 billion parameter model. The link for it will be in the description down below. You're gonna copy it, paste it right here, and then click on download. So then you're gonna click on model, then you're gonna select it. With this one, you actually need to use the auto GPTQ loader. For the W bits, you're gonna choose four and group size 128. And then you're gonna click on load. And now you're gonna click on session, then click on multi-model, and then click on this little button right here to restart the web UI. Now, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it gives you an error. And if it does, don't worry, it is actually pretty easy to solve because all you need is just edit this little text file right here that says cmd underscore flags and under this line you're gonna copy and paste this command that you will find in the description down below dash dash multi-model pipeline lava 13b and then you're gonna save the file and now if we relaunch the web ui again and then we click on the session tab you will see that the multi-model extension will be selected by default now to be able to use this you actually need to select the instruct mode which is basically a special chat mode that actually uses a special instruction template now you don't really need to know about this it actually does it automatically just know that if you want to use this trick you need to select this option but then it will also 
also give you a new field called send a picture, where you can basically drag and drop a new image inside the chat. So like for example, if I upload this funny image of a monkey right here, and now if I ask what is funny about this image, and I click on generate, this image depicts a monkey wearing sunglasses and a pink jacket, which adds an amusing touch to the scene. This humorous situation demonstrates how animals can sometimes appear more human-like than other creatures, leading to interesting comparisons and situations. So yeah, there you go. Just like ChatGPT, you can actually use the Lava 13 billion parameter model to analyze and describe an image and then have a conversation about it, which again sometimes is really just a gimmick, but it's still a pretty cool technology. And yeah, there you go. Now you know pretty much everything there is to know on how to install and use the Uva Buga Tech Generation Web UI. And once again, if you have any issues installing the software, do not forget that I offer a one-click installer on my Patreon page, as well as technical support if you have any issues. So once again, try it out yourself and have some fun. Please say goodbye to the viewers and thank them for watching. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time. See ya. And yeah, there you have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are literally the reason why I'm able to make these videos. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.